Thank you so much for your kind introduction. Uh, also, it's an honor to share the stage with Ajahn Sulak, who has changed my life's path and provided, provided me the platform to where I am today. I can understand as at a personal level our shared concern about the disappearance of uh, someone who is also a recipient of Brahman Maksai San Award. My husband passed away on a plane crash in Yangon 40 years ago. I gave birth to our son one month after. I felt devastated then, as if my war has come to an end. And so when I met Shumat for the first time in Manila, that was in 2015, I thought how terrible it must have been for her, not knowing where her husband was, whether he is dead or not. On that occasion, I also met uh, Edita Burroughs, whose son, Jonas, was, uh, was uh, adopted in daylight from the shopping mall in 2007. Suddenly, I felt the pain of my widowhood was uh, trivial compared to what human and editor must be going through. Not being able to move on, waiting for information and answers from authorities that are not forthcoming. Most of us, I'm sure, can imagine the pain of not knowing where our loved ones are. On the home front, in my home front, which is stayed in northern Myanmar, enforced disappearance are not uncommon. To set one well-documented case on 28 October 2011, Sumut Raja, a 28-year-old kitchen ethnic woman, her husband and father-in-law were arrested together while working in the uh, cornfield in uh, by soldiers of Myanmar government's light infantry battalion Shichuan. The two men managed to flee, but soon Raja was unable to escape the grip of the soldiers. The fate of the young Chen mother remains unknown until this day. Although presumed dead, her body has not been this is not happening only to us, as a number of other countries in the ASEAN region also have worrying lists of similar cases. Uh, the connecting point in this gross abuses of human rights is, is that despite claims to be on the part of reform, compelling evidence of ongoing state repressions can still be seen in several countries that have recent history of dictatorial and unjust rule. Enforced disappearances, however, are only an obvious form of state repression. repression. In Myanmar's case, equally unresolved are the political and ethnic grievances that have been the root cause of armed conflict since our country's independence in 1948. So I would like to make the point here that it is unrealistic to expect the psychological and physical pain caused by an unjust, oppressive system to heal and go away on its own. The root causes for the pain need to be addressed, for as long as the culture of inflicting pain with impunity is allowed to exist, the pain will continue to grow without ever having a chance to heal. So let us not be intimidated by state repression. We cannot let Sambhant, Jonas, Raja, and other victims disappear from the face of the earth, forgotten as if they never existed. Civil society organizations must not become polarized by fear of state harm. We must continue to strive together until a satisfactory explanation of each case of enforced disappearances is achieved. Now I would like to address the 
the main theme provided to me what are ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, responses to historic and contemporary social challenges. To summarize, it will be, I'm sorry, we are giving 30 minutes. <laughs> so I just want to make the most of the, the time. So I'm looking at my, uh, my uh, prepared text. So to, to be able to deliver as many points as possible. Uh, to, well, if we summarize, uh, in recent years, ASEAN's long-standing policies have been constructive and engaging, or turning battlefields into marketplaces among neighbors. But in the last case, it has to be asked if this has really proven factor, where conflict continues and it must be questioned who is really benefiting from the transitional impasse. Simply extracting timber or natural resources in areas where long-standing army struggles only profit powerful elites and business groups, but they do not bring any benefit uh, to the local peoples. Indeed, unbridled exploitation, whether through extracting resources, seizing lands, or imposing dams, can fuel the political and economic causes of conflict even more. That's why changing battlefields to marketplaces sound a good slogan in theory. Economic prioritization and interna international focus on development needs much greater analysis, research, participation, consultation, and policy understanding if it's to truly succeed in the field. So to illustrate this, we could look at Myanmar, the bigger picture of the long-running conflicts and under unaddressed political grievances. And just at this day, despite many claims and promises of nationwide peace, there are over 100,000 refugees in Thailand. Most of them are Korean and Korean. And then tens of thousands of refugees, migrants, legal and illegal in Malaysia, and hundreds of thousands of mostly Muslim refugees in Bangladesh. Uh, here you see the graphics shows the intensity of armed conflicts since 2011. Following the national election, when the latest reform process started under the government of President Lexi. In fact, in August 2011, a new peace process started, followed by the current Doha uh, Aung San uh, 21st Century Bangladesh Peace Conference. Uh, in terms of time, you see eight years of life now, the peace process, which is longer than the World War II, World War II between 1939 and 1945. So it's, we have the peace process longer than World War II. But you know, when we ask why is the peace process, is it really a peace process? Then you can look here in this graphic also. You see that the selected and elected, I say selected because 25% of the military are selected, elected. The parliament of both military and political party representatives has actually approved a defense budget that far exceeds any other government sector. Uh, even just recently, a week ago, there's a new budget which is proposed for the, again, the highest for the military and the, the, the other government services like health and education are at the bottom. Uh, this father, sorry, confirmed the government's lack of political will to resolve the conflict by peaceful means, a failure that has continued since independence in 1948. Attempting to solve the conflict by force, however, has proven to be very counterproductive. Squadering precious resources, human, economic, and nature over many decades. They gave me the impression, that gave me the impression that those in a position to impose their will confuse subjugation with peace, stability with status quo. And today, my country has the worst social health and humanitarian indicators in the ASEAN nation, which is of great concern to all neighboring countries. Uh, 
those are still learning Burmese. <laughs> what is said here in the blackboard is that this is a government school. It said the school will not issue a national identity card for mixed children. Normally in Myanmar, if you or Burma, if you go to to uh, well enter the school in the in the uh, you are issued identity card. But it's clearly said that for mixed children, they are not going to issue identity card. So, from your first day of school, you are faced with discrimination. In Burma or Myanmar, uh, this has become one of the greatest ethnic crises of our times. Another example here. Uh, this is a young Rohingya girl who has been arrested and sentenced to one day in prison for leaving an IDP camp where she was a teacher. She was born in Myanmar, speaks Burmese, and has passed her government matriculation exams. But she does not enjoy full citizenship rights, despite Myanmar being the only homeland that she has known. You can also see here that it's a great deal of complexity in the issue of citizenship and identity in Myanmar. Some of the issues are common international, others are more specific to Myanmar. Two of these are currently very acute in Myanmar, that is fear, number one is fear, and the second, resource ownership. There is a rising wave of fear among the majority of Myanmar people that they will become victims of terrorism, and that a significant demographic change will be a threat to the identity and culture. This has led to unreasonable and sometimes uncontrolled explosions of aggressions and violence against, uh, against minority groups. On the other hand, many non burma who founders of the nation, like uh, myself, Pachin, and other Karen, Moon, other ethnic uh, nationals, also fear discrimination, Unre uh, discrimination, unreasonable punitive measures, and the loss of ownership and control of resources on their traditional land. As a result, many civil society actors don't dare to touch these issues, considering it an, like an electric third rail, because it is so complex, and we don't know where to begin. I think uh, you also heard that just uh, well, US diplomat Bill Richardson first one, and then just recent departure of Thai MP, Kamsa uh, Chutiko, uh, from the community, trying to resolve the crisis in Yukon. So you can see that it's very complex, and people don't know how to start and end that. So, but the consequences of these failures are great, because we have 70 years of unresolved political grievances, and then, on top of that, more issues of concern are still arising on a daily basis despite hopes of democratic change in our country. Um, many must have heard about the two royal journalists, Wan Lung and Jio so who have been detained since 12 December 2017. At the time of the arrest, they had been investigating the killing of 10 Rohingya Muslim men and boys sitting here in a village in Myanmar's Rikang state. The key witness in this in their case, police officer, sorry, okay, so the police officer here on the right end, before and after, you can see, who testified that Wang Lo and Joso, who has been framed, has himself been sentenced to an undisclosed prison term for violating Myanmar's police. Disciplinary Act. It's a very worrying test case for freedom of expression in our country. So maybe you next. Should I just next slide? Now, uh, this picture has been everywhere on newspapers and social media. 
The point here is the general public must be allowed to express grievances without unnecessary restrictions and in a non-biased manner. Equally important, the public must be able to exercise these fundamental rights without fear of reprisals and violence on the part of the police or political prosecution. This is the, the photo that's about the recent anti war protest in Yango. It was initially peaceful, but when the police told the protester that they, sh they were assembling in a prohibited area, then the organizers agreed to disband. However, then the real police then forcefully dispersed the protester, and then a group of plain clothes uh, men joined the police, and then, well, uh, the, the law enforcement officials also did not stop them. So the point about, my point about democracy is not being perfect is, I'm, I'm showing that uh, as an example of what is happening right now in Myanmar. My intention is, is a warning to those who come to democratic power through elections, that they should be cautious about regarding themselves, the sole and absolute absolute dispensers of solutions to the problem that their countries face. This is especially the case in my country in Myanmar. Democracy have to, this is a lecture point, the democracy have to constantly work at having an open dialogue and discourse, discourse, reflection and inclusion so that the best answers can be found to complex challenges. Uh, a case in point is that Western democracy is even after undergoing an evolutionary period of over 200 years, they are still grappling to find answers to issues related to the enjoyment of people's rights. In a first changing world, democracy will always be a work in progress. For democratic government governance, to succeed, people must appreciate democracy and use its potential. Reliance on strong men or women needs to a culture leads to a culture of impunity, corruption, failure, and repression against which there may be little recourse until the system eventually collapses or another strong man tries to take control. At root, I don't think the political crisis in Myanmar have been unique in the modern world, which is why the continuing endeavors in the country for peace and reform are so important. A union of equality was agreed upon at independence, but it has never been achieved. Until this, there will always be instability and underachievement in the country, which in turn always raises the prospect of gravity, flight, and political uncertainty in the region. In the meantime, an unrepresentative elite, both military and largely mono-ethnic, is attempting to take over more control of the country by force. Sad to say, this is a symptom of the problem in Myanmar right now, and that has now become a cause of the problem, with no just or immediate solution in sight. I, I stop here because I just want to show, skip to the other photos because I saw this, uh, your artistic expression, uh, the participants have drawn over there, so I just would like to sh show you some. So, I just skip this part of ASEAN. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> Um, we have a project that is running in the 167, there are 167 IDPs, IDP, uh, internal displaced camps along the Sino Myanmar, Sino Burma uh, borderline. Uh, the war has resumed seven years now and over 120,000 are displaced, have been displaced since then. So a girl who is six years, uh, 10 years old then is now 17 years old. Uh, you know, uh, the newly born are already seven years old now. So as the, this project is about our children 
overcoming conflict and displacement through the arts. Uh, after in some of you are familiar with the curriculum in, in the country, in Myanmar, that we have hardly teachers, enough teachers, to teach us the, the, the curriculum provided by the government. Uh, we don't have any other, you know, uh, like sports, music classes uh, to, the, uh, to the school curriculum. But in the RTP camps, what we do is after school time, uh, we provide art and other other uh, classes, and one of the classes is people who are interested in art can join, age between 14 and 17, and then they would visit these IDB camps. And visiting IDB camps, they will come back and express the expression of how they see uh, how children are coping with uh, displacement, how family has been scattered, uh, family has lost their loved, loved ones, uh, not having enough food on the table, not having enough, uh, well, houses, uh, houses and tents. They have to, 10 by 10, they have to share minimum uh, five uh, family members. So on that, uh, it's more like a, for them it's also a uh, psycho, uh, I would say, social uh, you know, healing uh, process. And um, I try again. Yeah. So these are the, so they always choose the, the, oh. was, uh, 2016 students, they have chosen uh, their roots. So they would show that their roots, how they come to the, the camp. They come to the camp from the mountains because the, you know, it's, it's a very rare phenomenon. People are fleeing from the government troops. That's a very rare phenomenon happening in Myanmar since 70 years now. So they show the roots, they are coming from down from the mountain and that they have come. So that, that's, that's uh, So, and there's another four slides that showed. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, so these are the children. You can see that behind the, the children, they are bullet holes. No? So, amazing, you know, these bullet holes, the, the visiting students visit there, but when they come, they transform these bullet holes like flowers, very soft, you know, toes. You know, I, I love that because it's showing that they are surprised. They can overcome that. See the bullet holes. That, that's a topic. So they make it into flowers. Uh, so the person who has drawn this is the latest over there. Uh, maybe age 15. I'm not so sure then. I've written there. And here, the topic, life in boxes. I wish I had more time <laughs> to talk about life in the boxes, especially for teenagers. They felt they are cramped. You know, they have to share their room with their siblings. They are teenagers with their parents. Uh, in that small hole, I mean, the, the box, they have to cook, they have to eat, they have to clean, they have to do their homework. There's no privacy. So last time when I was visiting the camps, young, young teenagers, they start using this pointed uh, I don't know how you call this, uh, this uh, tools when they, you use it with the mathematics. They will, you know, make some, you know, drawing, you know, on their own. Uh, because this is something cheap, you know, they cannot go to a movie, they cannot go to anywhere, so they, they do that. And some would go, well, they would go outwards, meaning to China or wherever. You know, so there are lots of, lots of social problems within the settlements. So I just want to show, not to, uh, I just want you to show that arts is very important, uh, especially in a country like mine, that uh, people are displaced, people cannot have much trust in the system anymore. Some, some would try to overcome the system, change the system, 
uh, and then daily basis we have flooding now we have we have to face many many problems and arts is a way to overcome that so i just want to encourage you that, that those that are drawing